hard button was. Here we go. Now I'm going to share. Now we're official. What's that? Now we're official. Yes. Take your time, Amy. Okay. Yes. All right. You got slides. I'm sharing over there. I see. Let me see. Let me see. T -t -t -t. Let me see that. Okay. We're good. All right. Welcome everybody to get organized tips from an expert. I'm going to be sneaking over here because I'm going to have to be admitting people. Um, tips for an expert. You're going to be able to start today. Me, Amy Van Lu, I'll introduce myself. And then Emily, who is, um, hold on here. I got to admit. That's a problem with having an admit um, a waiting room, but that's okay. So I might get disorganized. Hold on. So um, Emily is a member of the Be Healthy Enough Fitness Studio for, gosh, several, several years ago. I met Emily a long time ago when she, you hosted Emily at my house. Do you remember this? Um, um, the organizing bags that you you used to sell? Oh my yes. God. What was yes. it? 30, 33? No, 31. 31. 31. I love those bags and I still have them from when we're camping and um, admit all. Hold on. Um, yeah, that was a that was a fun little side hustle. Yeah, that I did for a while um, because I was using so many of their products for organizing. Yeah, it was like Tupperware for organizing. <laughs> totally, yes. And you hosted a party. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, and and so and Emily's a professional organizer. I think she'll do a little bit more introduction of herself. And we're going to go through uh, so many things. I'm going to get started with. Are you guys seeing, or are you just seeing my slide? Let's see. I'll put that here and then I can see that there. So let's get started. Bef but before we get started, this is being recorded if you didn't already get that little notification. So if you don't be on be on camera, I'm gonna be uploading this. You can hide yourself um, if you want. If you wanna be a star, this, is, this will be on the Be Healthy Enough website. Um, digital fitness studio and I'll probably put it out on YouTube just to let you know so everybody can see it thousands and thousands of people great Amy thanks <laughs> follow me yes 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 <laughs> um, I will be sending out the replay if for some reason you can't hear me or you can't see me or something goes wrong so you can watch this again if you forget some of the tips that Emily and I share with you uh, the other thing I want you to to remember is keep yourself muted. Emily's gonna be doing a, a webinar style and we'll be taking questions at the end. We love questions. I love questions. Emily love questions. I'm going to honor the time that we have. Um, so I'm gonna be monitoring these. And, and if we can't get to them in the hour, Zoom is so cool if you, it, it copies all the chat and I can I can go in and we can answer those questions later in a, in a follow up email and stay tuned to the very end because both of us have special gifts for you. Some of you may not know me. I sent this out on Facebook and I know I got a lot of new faces. So who the heck am I? I help women over 50 get moving and feel better even as those darn aches and pains of age start to creep in or you get a horrible diagnosis. I got diagnosed with breast cancer in December and I had a mastectomy in February. So it's been six weeks so far, but you got to keep moving even when those things creep in. My purpose is life. I was, I'm a retired, I, I always tell myself I'm a recovering engineer and project manager. So I love the plan. I love all that stuff, but I like to meld that with my passion for health and fitness. I have had this passion since college to find different ways to get you moving, inspire you to move and find different ways, like just getting organized maybe to get unstuck. So you can lead a productive, healthy life. I do this through online workouts. I don't do any group classes anymore or one-on-one, -on -one, but they're all designed for us over 50 through motivation and community. When I poll members, and most people that why they don't exercise. The number one thing that pops up is motivation. So that's every month I get on my thinking cap. I'm reading this um, and doing the, the instruction or the whole workbook. It's called The Artist Way by Julia Cameron and how to bring out your creativity. As an engineer, I'm very stuck in my left brain, but this is helping me find even more ways. In fact, April, I just um, 
put together a spring bingo to get you to exercise with a little bingo challenge. And then education and research. This is what I love, love, love to do. I'm an osteoporosis fitness specialist, a menopause fitness specialist. I just finished my pelvis pro course, still figuring out how to, how to roll that out to members. And I just started an arthritis course because arthritis has been knocking on my door, um, people getting questions to that. Why getting organized is good for your health. Uh, as I was thinking about having folks, uh, oh, hold on, oh shoot, I'm not admitting people. Um, as I was thinking about being healthy and and, and I, I think I was talking with Emily at the beginning of the year, I don't remember how this got started, but I, I kind of thought about why being, help, being organized is helping your health. The first one is stress is mess. Mess is stress. Stress is cortisol. And when your cortisol, it's a stress hormone. It's that hormone that I know I'm pumping and Emily's pumping right now to get ready for a presentation. But if that stays high too long, guess what? It causes our body to hold on to everything in case we need it for later. And that means that, hold on. Hold on. It means that it gets stored on our bodies. And typically, if you're a woman over 50, it's right in the belly. And so getting rid of mess can help you reduce belly fat. That's kind of a stretch. Um, clutter is linked to weight gain. I saw numerous studies on this. The lack of exercise, if you are not organized and, you're, and you can't plan your meals, you can't get to your workout equipment, you can't find your workout equipment, your treadmill's all covered with stuff and dusty, that is, could be a cause of weight gain. The other thing, it, oh, too much um, stuff everywhere, it could cause you to slip and fall. If you've got crap everywhere and things that you could fall in over 50, falling can be a horrible thing to happen. The, the statistics on people that fall and have a break, break in your hip, God forbid your back or your neck or your arm, the time to recover does get much longer uh, as we get older. And then keeping those sniffles away, getting rid of that dust and those germs. And then um, simply improving your memory by improving your life. How many times have you just thrown your keys underneath the pile of, of, of mail that you picked up and then you can't find them? So if you are organized and you put your keys in one spot all the time, maybe your memory will improve. And then the last one, I think this is my last one, fighting off embarrassment and isolation. I know this is kind of down the, the almost hoarding if you're embarrassed, your place doesn't look nice, you don't want to have people come over, that can lead to some embarrassment and isolation. And we don't want any of that for anyone. So that is exactly why we're marrying getting organized with me being a health coach and a fitness coach. And I think that's going to be it, Emily. I'm going to unshare. Give me a sec to get all unshared. Stop mm -hmm. sharing. And um, let's see. So when you come on, if you want it, if you have any questions or anything like that, I want you to um, put them in the chat. Or if you want to tell me where you're from, if you're new to be healthy enough, just tell me where you're from. And then Emily, you ready? Ready. It looks so pretty behind you. I love that. You're so <laughs> <laughs> It's my organized office. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try and share my screen here. It's there. Across. Did it work? Yes, it is. Excellent. Excellent. Hi, everybody. It's really nice to see you all and to meet you. Uh, my name is Emily Fawcett, and I am a professional organizer, and I'm the founder and lead organizer at Ruskin Road Organizing which is based in San Diego, California. And I'm sorry if this is a spoiler for anyone, but SDSU just won. So we're, we're very happy here in San Diego. They're going to the final four. Um, anyway, so I'm really excited to be able to talk to everybody about organizing and kind of geek out on the subject. I know, I know a lot of people um, uh, find it interesting. And I... I'm able to work with clients because of this wonderful technology and because of airplanes, I'm able to work with clients all over the country. And I help people um, 
get organized, like their pantries, their closets, offices, um, garage is a big one. I also help people move uh, and downsize and prepare for a move. I've had a client who was trying to sell her house for two to three years and the clutter that was in the house, 20 plus years of stuff was just more that she can do on her own. So the realtor brought me in and I helped her. And within three months, she got an excellent price for her home and she she moved out and is now living on the coast. So that's a, a great thing for her. But basically, I really love to help people. And I love to help people particularly get unstuck. So today, I'm going to share some information with you that hopefully will help you on the road to getting unstuck. If you have some organizing projects at home that have stalled, hopefully I'll be able to give you a spark. And these are the things I'm going to talk about today. We'll do questions at the end. So the first thing I'm going to do is talk about the C word. Then I will share with you the one organizing book that I think if you're interested in organizing and you want to do it on your own, you should have in your collection. I'll share with you some tricks of the trade. There are loads of them, but I'll give you three. And then at the end, three takeaways, uh, keys for success. Three things to think about before you embark on any organizing project. And then, like I said, at the end, we'll do Q&A. But my approach to uh, organizing is really kind of a holistic approach. And you could say it's WH holistic or just H holistic. So before we get started, um, I'm hopeful you guys will all do this with me. I want to make sure we're all fully present and have arrived here at this webinar and ready to take in what we need to hear. And if you'll do this, we're gonna do some box breathing, which is inhaling for four, holding for four, and exhaling for four. So if you're comfortable, you can close your eyes and we'll begin. Inhale one, two, three, four, holding one, two, three, four, and exhale. One, two, three, four. Again, inhale in, two, three, four. Hold for four, three, two, one. Exhale, four, three, two, one. Okay, we should be here. I also recommend doing that before you start any exercise, uh, sorry, <laughs> exercise <laughs> over two, but organizing project. Okay, so we're starting with the C word, the dreaded C word. What is the C word? The C word is clutter. We might have rooms like this in our homes. I'm very, very curious to know what a room like this, how a room like this makes you feel. That's the first thing I wanna know. So if you can, Throw it in the chat. How does it make you feel if you were to work in a room like this or live with a room like this in your home? I know for me, I look at this space and I think I feel anxious. I feel discombobulated and I can't focus. So hopefully you're adding a couple of things to the chat. I think there are. Amy, if you could tell me some yeah. of them, that'd be great. The overwhelming, <laughs> um, thanks Julie for the box breathing. I think that, that helps with stress. Um, stressed out, overwhelmed, um, embarrassed. Yep, stressed. Uh, yep. For me, <laughs> I told Emily when we were talking about this, it gives me a hot flash. I swear, I'm not lying. I just got a hot flash when I look at that. Um, <laughs> I feel stressed and unfocused. Everybody's stressed, sad. Oh, that is yeah. Make me sad. I hadn't thought about being sad. Those are great. Yeah, those are excellent. And unfortunately, very, very common. Yep. Um, overwhelmed is a big one. And I'm going to try and help you today uh, with some strategies to dissipate that feeling of overwhelm. But we have to answer the question yep. what is clutter? Yep. Hold on one sec. I've got that one. So I'm going to launch that one. 
So we have a poll here and I, I can see it. Hopefully everyone else can see it. I'll read it out. So what is clutter? Which one of these resonates the most with you? Is it unopened mail that's been sitting for days? Clothes jammed in the closet that no longer fit? A stuffed kitchen drawer with too many gadgets? A dusty old treadmill piled with magazines and books? or plastic tubs full of memories that stuck in the garage. So if you could put your answers in, I'm really curious to see what the winner is. Yeah, give them like two more seconds. We still, sure. got, we still got answers coming in. I know for me, I put that plastic tub full of memories because that's, I call that my organized clutter. <laughs> it's in a box. But it's, it's been sitting there for 20 years with the hopes that I would get to it and organize it and make some use of it. Oh, looks like. What do you, what do you think, Amy, is um, holding you back from addressing it, attacking it, you know, sorting it? Um, hold on one second. I'm going to admit somebody because you just put me in the hot seat. Yes, uh, I did. That's a great <laughs> question. Oh, my gosh. And you don't have to answer. It's no, 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 no. I want to because I, it, there's there's a definite reason. One, definitely it's not a high priority. Um, it's definitely something that's out of sight, out of mind, because I do have an attic that I could put it in and hide it. I don't see it. And maybe, maybe it doesn't have a lot of meaning to me either. You know, I don't I don't know what I would do with that. You know, it does, I don't know what 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 that would feel like if I did get that organized. I hadn't thought about that one. That was a great question. Always good. Just be curious. Ask yeah. yourself the questions. Get a little curious. I'm like, hmm, why, why haven't I managed that pile of mail? Or just and be gentle with yourself when you do yeah. it. That's very okay, good. So I think there's a winner. There definitely is plastic tubs full of stuff. Can you see the poll yourself? I can. Okay, yes, cool. I can. An open mail or a dusty old treadmill. Yes. Yes. That's I'm so proud of you guys. Your, your treadmills are not dusty because you're working out. <laughs> um, step uh, clothes jam. That's that's another one too. Those are yep. really the plastic tubs of memories and photos. I see them all the time, all the time. In uh, people that I help uh, clean garages, uh, declutter garages, organize garages, downsizing and moving, that's another big one. So oh. what is clutter? All of these are right. There's no right or wrong answer to this, but more often than not, whoops, clutter is more often than not delayed decisions. So you're, you've got your pile of stuff and it's usually in a place that you can see. And for whatever reason, you just aren't dealing with it. You don't want to. And you know what? Maybe it's a decision you don't want to make. It's a painful feeling. Maybe it's not even your decision to make. Husbands, teenagers, people leave their stuff around. They haven't made decisions. So there can be some technical issues about why you might have clutter. You can maybe not have enough um, space, real estate for the things that you have, or it could be delayed decisions. So if you're looking upon a stuffed kitchen drawer or clothes jammed in a closet, just take a moment and say, okay, are there any decisions here that I've been putting off? And I'm gonna help you during this presentation uh, to learn some tricks and trade uh, tricks of the trade on how to deal with making those decisions and tending to the clutter. Okay, so I have a question. How many people know the woman on the left? And I'm pretty sure all of you know the woman on the right. Well, the woman on the left is Julie Morgenstern, and she wrote the one book that I think you should buy if you're interested in organizing from the inside out. I think Amy has a link to this. In I, her, I do. Uh, I'm going to put that. It's a link to Amazon in the chat. Um, if Let me see, make sure I'm going to everybody. Yeah, I found that on Amazon and it's not too expensive. So 
No, it was written in 1998. My particular copy still has the very old Amazon um, receipt when Amazon used to give receipts. <laughs> so it's 25 years old. And I honestly feel it's the most useful organizing book out there. I use it as a reference book. Um, I go back to it again and again, and I have loads of organizing books because of my profession. And hers, for my money um, and my time, is the one book to have. Yeah, it looks like, Emily, that Yvonne's read it. So we have a, a oh, someone great. already read it, which is good. Good to know. Great. Then, then some of the things will sound familiar to you. But if you don't know the book, um, I do want to warn you. It does not really have any pictures in it. It's it's a black and white book. And you can see my highlights and dog-eared stuff in here. It's got maybe, you know, a picture like that. But it doesn't have the fancy, staged, gorgeous photos that we often see on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. So I wanted to say a word about that. Those photos are delicious. They're lovely. Here's one right here, this pantry. It's it's gorgeous. I can make you a pantry like that if that's what you really want. But will it function for you? Does it have all of your stuff in it? Another one, this closet. It's staged. It's staged for photography. It's got a little Chanel bag in the back corner, and it's got like a half mannequin on the right side for these high boots that this person owns, potentially. Um, so we don't we don't really know, is that really their stuff? This one cracks me up. This one's hysterical. This is apparently someone's refrigerator. This one just, I, I, just, I can't believe this one. That yeah. can't be real. It, it just makes me laugh. And I, I think that when we're stuck scrolling through Instagram and Facebook and, and TikTok, you know, we see perfection all the time. And it's important to realize that just because maybe your space isn't like color coordinated produce to the rainbow, it doesn't mean that you're a failure and it doesn't mean that you've done it wrong. It just means it's real life and it's not staged. These are some of my favorites too. The before and afters. Um, the before, you know, always shows a mess. The after doesn't always show the same space or even in this case, like the same clothes. Like it's just a neutral palette of clothes. There isn't that bright red or bright green shirt that's sticking out. So this is my ultimate favorite. You know, the before on the left, all of this stuff, and then the after, where did it all go? This, is how, this is how I clean up for company, <laughs> just yeah. push, it, push it in my closet. <laughs> so it's, to me, like, this isn't really dealing with it. This is just getting it out of there, which sometimes we all have to do and, and uh, you know, put it under the rug or, or something when we have guests coming. But really, all you have to remember is you just need to be organized enough. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you some tips and tricks um, how to do that. And the first one we're going to start with is uh, um, a bit like what's in Julie's book. I think Julie Morgenstern came up with the space principle. Um, I've made a couple of uh, tweaks to it, but I think professional organizers today use this system a lot and unfortunately don't give Julie enough credit for coming up with it. So the first uh, letter is S for sort. So let's pretend we've got a junk drawer. You got a junk drawer is a junk drawer. It has a lot of stuff in it, but you can have an organized junk drawer. Okay, so you want to take everything out and sort like things with like things. That's where you start. You don't think about it. No decision-making process needed, really. You just put the batteries together. You put the paper clips together. You put the old um, takeout menus together, whatever is in there, in their own little categories. And then the second letter is P, purge. This is where some decision-making comes in. Look at your piles and say, okay, anything, This let's get the low-hanging fruit first. Anything broken, 
stained or no longer relevant easy in the trash it goes. And it's helpful actually at this point, if you have three different boxes or bins or trash bags, one labeled trash, one labeled recycle, and one labeled donate. So you're going through, then you need to look, and maybe this is not in the junk drawer, but in other areas like a closet or a garage or under the bed or in your office, look out for what I call aspirational clutter. And aspirational clutter is the things that one day you're going to do. And I'll share just a couple of my own that I sorted through recently. I thought one day I am going to have a sushi party over at my house. And therefore I need all of these gadgets and mats and bowls and spoons to have the sushi party. I never had the sushi party. I'm never going to have the sushi party. So I took all of those, I put them in donate and I let them go. That's aspirational clutter. Be on the lookout for that, the one day stuff. Then there's also the just in case stuff. So another one for my example is I'm going to keep 12 plastic blow up mattresses because just in case my family comes to visit and we all stay downstairs in various rooms on blow ups in the house. That I had to think about for a minute. We're all too old to be on blow up mattresses, <laughs> not comfortable anymore, not going to be used. So I let those go and I donated them to the Salvation Army and it felt great. So purge is where you're going to do some decision making and take your time with it, think about it, and think about those categories. Now, the next thing is A, assign an accessible home. A is when you decide where it's going to live, where its home is going to be. In this case of the junk drawer, you know it, you know where it's going to live, but look at your piles and you see you've got X number of pens. X number of batteries, X number of whatever else it is, and you get a sense for how it's all going to fit in that space. Now you get to go to the container store. I know that's what everybody wants to do. But before you go, very important to measure first. Not only measure the drawer, if we're still talking about the junk drawer, measure the length, the width, and the height of the drawer so when you get to the store, you know exactly what is actually going to fit inside the drawer. And I would also recommend measuring the piles of stuff you have, like how many pens do you have and how long do you need a container to be to fit all of those pens. So then you get to go to the container store or the dollar store or Target, and you should choose coordinating containers. And it may seem silly, but there's a reason why you want to choose containers that you like, that match, um, that are kind of fun, because it will make the chore of putting stuff back in their homes just a little more fun, a little less boring, and uh, a little more enjoyable. So then the last step is E, and Julie calls it equalize, and I, I call it evaluate. Evaluate what you've got, evaluate your new space. Is it working for you? Can you access the most important things? Is it reachable? Can you see everything? Those are important things to evaluate before you can start really enjoying it. And then you have to remember maintenance is key. Like a minute or two every day should be enough to put things back so long as you've created a home for them. So I say it often to clients. Um, a place for everything and everything in its place. And it truly, truly does make sense. So that's the space principle. Another trick of the trade is called friends, acquaintances, and strangers. And this is particularly helpful if you're cleaning out your closet. So you're kind of going all Marie Kondo on your closet on this one. So you take everything out. Yes, you take everything out of the closet. 
And instead of piling it on your bed or the floor in one lump, you use the space principles, the first couple, and you sort t-shirts with t-shirts, dresses with dresses, jeans with jeans, like things with like things. And then you take a look, you purge where you can. Again, anything stained or ripped, or you know you're not gonna wear it again, low hanging fruit, get your three bins out, trash, probably not recycle, and donate, get those ready and get rid of the things that you can at first. Then by each segment, t-shirts first, let's say, you're gonna look at the t-shirt and say, is this a friend of mine? Is this someone I love to spend time with? Is this something that makes me feel good? And if it's a yes, easy, then it's a friend and you put it in the friend pile. If you find one, you're like, eh, it's okay. It's all right. It's not my favorite, but yeah, it's okay. You put it in the acquaintances pile. You pick up another one and you're like, I don't like how I look in this. I don't like how I feel in this. Then it goes in the stranger pile. And you do that for all your categories. I know it takes a long time, but it'll work. So now you've got your three piles. Strangers is easy. That goes in donation. Off it goes to Salvation Army or Goodwill or wherever you like to donate. The friends pile gets to go back inside the closet. You'll now have a lot more space in the closet. You'll be surrounded by your favorite things. Energy will start to move in that space. And then you have the acquaintances pile. This is probably going to be the biggest pile. It generally is. So you look at them again and say, okay, you make that decision. Is this acquaintance a friend or a stranger? You make those decisions. And if you're still left with a pile, which you probably will be, you get the next tip. And that's the six month box. You take a tub or a box, one. Whenever I tell clients one, they get the biggest tub they can find or like a refrigerator <laughs> sign. <laughs> I was thinking and they put all that stuff into the six month box and you label it six months. You put a note on your calendar six months from today or an alarm on your phone six months from today and you put it out of sight. You can, you have permission to put it in the garage, put it under the bed, put it in the attic, put it out of sight and get on with your life. Then when the alarm goes off or the calendar shows you it's been six months, if you haven't gone and fished through that box for that acquaintance, if you haven't dug it out by now, you probably don't need it, probably don't want it. So take that six month box, don't open it and go directly to your Salvation Army or Goodwill or a donation place of your choice. You don't have to open it again. You've already done it. You've already done the work. Now it's time to let go. Okay. So we're going to get to question and answers shortly. Um, I do just want to really leave you with three key takeaways for um, success on an organizing project. So the first one is follow the space principle. Sort, purge, assign a home, coordinate containers, evaluate, maintain, and enjoy. That is gonna get you started. It's gonna get you finished. It'll get you through the process. Highly recommend it and I use it all the time. The next one is give yourself time and grace. By time, most organizing jobs, even the small ones, will probably take longer than you think they're going to. So I would say, let's, let's say you're planning on tackling the closet. You've got a weekend booked. You're like, I'm gonna do four hours on Saturday, in two hours on Sunday. 
I would say two things. Add an extra two hours to the end. Clear your calendar for the rest of that Sunday, just in case. The other thing I'm going to say is you have a planner and a doer. So your planner is saying, all right, Saturday, I'm going to take these four hours. Sunday, I'm going to take those two hours and I'm going to get my closet going. That may be great for your planner, but your doer may wake up Saturday morning and say, I'm really not in the mood. I'm not in the mood to do this. And unlike exercise, where you do have to push yourself a little bit to get those clothes on, get out the door, pop in a video, click on Amy, you got to push yourself a little bit, but you're going to get those endorphins going and it's worth it. Organizing, I would say, is a little bit different. You really need to be in the mood. You need to be in the mood to let go. And you need to be in the mood to clean and sort and work. So don't beat yourself up if you have a plan and you don't stick to it. Don't beat yourself up if you start fading in the middle of it, because let me tell you, decision fatigue is real and you probably will get a little bit tired during the process. And if you're chugging along and you're, you got up Saturday morning and you're excited to do the closet, you did your four hours and now you're on Sunday, you're in the home stretch, but it doesn't look like a Pinterest page, don't worry about it. Does it function for you? Is it better than it was before? Those are the key things that you need to hold on to. Then lastly, I would say don't resist asking for help. I know people tend to think that they should be able to do these organizing jobs on their own. They should be motivated. They should be able to handle all their clutter. But really all you're doing saying that to yourself is shooting on yourself. So don't do that. Ask for help. And you can ask for help from a book, a YouTube video, or a professional. Um, and I would say the vast majority of professional organizers will earn, will, will, you know, be worth their fee in the time and stress saved uh, on an organizing project. And it doesn't have to be a lot of money. It doesn't have to be uh, many, many sessions. I offer a 30-minute spark session where I help people get going, get jumpstart, or I help them finish they're so close to getting over the finish line, but there's a couple of things they need help with, or I just help them get unstuck if they don't know where to start um, at all. So those are some takeaways. Follow the space principle, give yourself plenty of time and grace, and don't, don't be afraid to ask for help, however, whatever form it comes in. So really, that's it for me. I consolidated a lot of information in a short amount of time. I really appreciate uh, all of you sticking through to the end. And I'm happy to answer any questions, give you a couple minutes to put some in the chat. And uh, Amy, please, if there are any questions, I'm happy to take them. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, I was on my that's own. Okay. <laughs> private mute. My cat was going to come in and annoy me. I'm going to share real quick before we get before you have to leave, if you don't have any questions, I want to share my screen. Can you unshare? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. Did I do that? You did it right. Right. Um, I'm going to go into slideshow. Okay. Uh, hold on one sec. There we go. Share my screen. There we go. Okay, so thank you all for attending. I, I know I've seen, I see a couple questions there in the chat and I've got a, a couple of them myself because I'm in the middle of organizing. Um, but definitely I want to, to share a free gift for you guys. So Emily is offering a free 20 minute jump start if you just don't know how to get started. Uh, sign up, I'm gonna leave the link in the chat. I've got that as soon as I unshare. Um, so make sure you do that. And then also, I created 
a, I did this in 2015, organizing your life and your, and your, and your pantry and, and all sorts of things and your office and your garage and all your stuff is great. But sometimes the springtime is also a good time to just clean out your body. I did this in 2015, a seven day challenge based on some things I learned in my Institute of Integrative Nutrition coaching course that I took for a year. I streamed to line it. It's not one of your juice detoxes or any fancy tea or anything. It's just a way to give your body a reset for seven days. I'm, I created an ebook. It's got all the, the protocol and it's got, hold on, someone's coming in a little late. Oh, that's okay. Um, little um, protocol. I've got a sample meal plan. I've got some recipes and I'm giving it to everybody for free today that joined this as a nice thank you. Uh, so you can do that. We may as membership, I'm still talking with my members about if we do that as a group. I'm thinking I have a wedding in mid-April. My brother's getting married. And then um, we might do it after that because I may need to detox after a wedding. <laughs> so, And then also for everybody who joined, if you want to start exercising appropriately for women over 50, I'm going to give you 50% off your first month. That's like 10 bucks for your first month. And I also on top of that, give you a seven day free trial. We are starting the April monthly theme, which starts on Saturday is called it's spring. Let's get outside. I have videos that I filmed while camping. And I also have videos um, for outside walking. They're kind of like, I call them podcasts. We're walking, they, we walk with a purpose. And we walk for, for example, three minutes fast and three minutes slow. I have one where we go five, four, three, two, one. Fun to get you out walking, but also maybe to learn some things about being healthy enough. And now for questions, I'm gonna stop sharing and go to the chat. Um, I've got five new messages. So here we go. I'm gonna dig in. Um, question for Emily. Uh, the first one's from Barb. Um, what to do with those memory items? Oh, this is a big one for me. Those kids' drawings, the anniversary cards, the old photos. Do you have tips on how to deal with those? Yes, I have some. They are definitely um, the trickiest and the most common. My recommendation to clients, uh, let's start with the kids' artwork. I would select, let's say, first follow the space principle. That's that's the first thing. So you have a tub of all of these things. You want to put like things with like things and then evaluate it and see how many photos you have, how many um, kids' art projects you have, and then you can start whittling it down. There's no magic number with um, a client that I had who had probably 75 pieces of artwork from um, her kids growing up. Now her kids are, I think they just graduated high school and she's, you know, she had all the kindergarten through, you know, fifth grade really when they were doing that. I told her of the 75, you could pick five Ooh. from each year, like from, you know, kindergarten, pick your favorite five to start first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then break it down to those five and then see if you can cull it down a little bit further. Just remember that when you're doing um, things that have memories, mementos, photos, they're going to take a little longer because you probably will sit back, reflect, oh, I remember that. And so it's gonna take a little bit longer and know that it's going to create quite a bit of decision fatigue and, and tough feelings to let go of some of that, particularly photographs. I have people who will keep photographs with like half a head in it because they feel like they're throwing that person away. You're not throwing that person away. It's okay to let it go you're doing a much better job honoring that person if you find a great photo of them, frame it and display it rather than keep it in a tub. That's, I hope that helped a little. That's really good advice. I did, did a couple of people said the same thing about applying that same principle to old photos. And even for me now, my photos are all online. 
And that's been an overwhelming. My cloud is getting so full, but there's so many things I don't want to throw away. So I'm thinking I can do that with, you know, pictures of whiskey, pictures yes. of for my business, pictures of vacations and things like that, doing that space principle and looking at friends, acquaintances, and yeah, the, those ones that are are ugly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> There's another one from Julie. I'm a procrastinator and Kate kept saying when I retire, I would tackle the clutter. How many of us have done that? Um, it's full of photos. I don't know what to do with and crafts. I'm hoping to get to um, after I clean up the mess, I'm overwhelmed. My gosh, I'm looking at that one right there and going, I, I'm hearing the need to ask for help in that one. <laughs> when you get overwhelmed, it might be a chance to get someone to kickstart. I'm just answering the question for you, Emily. No, no, that's okay. <laughs> a, a, a kickstart will will help and kind of a strategy to yeah. get you um, going in appropriate steps. The space principle will work here. Um, photos are tricky and it's time consuming. I do believe that when you sort out photos and you see them in stacks, like what you have photos of, who you have photos of, yeah. um, you will be able to say, okay, I, I really don't need a hundred of whiskey, maybe. Yeah. And you pick out the best ones. I like the that. Best ones, frame them, hang them, yeah. display them. And that's the way you honor that person or that puppy or yeah. whatever it is. But uh, getting back to the procrastination. Again, this goes back to one of the principles of giving yourself enough time and some grace. Mm -hmm. Do it when you're in the mood. Yeah. If you have a lot of energy one day and you feel like tackling it and starting it, do it. Do you, speaking of being in the mood, this is my question. Do you have any tips to get in the mood if you're not? Well, for me, I look at it like, I know the energy it's going to release from all the stuff that's stuck and messy. And I know that energy is going to make me feel brighter and more awake yeah. and more clear headed. Mm -hmm. I mean, I will blast music. That's, that's my jam. I like to play loud music that I love and start following that space principle. <laughs> It, it sounds it sounds close to a lot of people have you know some struggles getting motivated to exercise, and I, I say the same thing. You like maybe thinking about why you want to do it, and you just put the nail on the head. Is that that why is that when it's done, how you'll feel and how you'll you know that that energy that you'll get from having that organization and just taking the moment to to think about why you want to do it. Truly. Yeah, it is the why. And it's, it's the removal of things that may be making you feel bad. Like the removal of the clothes that maybe don't fit anymore, or the removal of the craft or the activity that, you know what, I really just don't think I'm going to do that anymore. Or, you know, maybe I'm not able to do that anymore. Like stop keeping it to torture yourself, you know, like let it go, let yeah. it go. And, and I'm seeing Denise too, your the struggle to get is, um, is that Denise, is that you with the raise your hand? Uh, Denise Damore, I have a question. Okay, come on. You raised your hand. That's so sweet. I've never done this before. So come on. Let's. <laughs> oh, I see you now. Okay. Hi, so Denise. Mike, Mike, hi. Thank you for this. Um, my question is, um, I started a business last summer and I live in a small house I'm renting. And I have piles all over that to do with the business. And I have a craft room that's not organized. And I have children coming to visit me in eight days. Okay. And my, my two things, like I'm trying to hang on to, is this part of my past or part of my future? Like, because I've done crafts my whole life, but now it's, it's, uh, it's like one direct thing that I'm doing now, uh, simplified. So there's that and letting go. I'm trying to do that, but there is an energy to that. And then the other thing is I don't, I wanted to organize it, but I don't have the time because I don't want to handle things twice. Okay. So what, are, what are your suggestions? I'm trying to boil down what you're, what you're asking. A clear so, house for when they come. <laughs> ah, well, eight days, not a lot of time. 
It yes. depends what your life looks like for the next eight days. If I you're probably gonna, dedicate eight hours a day to organizing or work, it's both to get rid of it, organize, clutter, whatever, you know. Okay. I would give yourself maybe three of those eight days mm -hmm. to dig in, really dig in. And I'm trying to remember what you have. You have work stuff. Yeah. Work, pa like paperwork. Um, so I, I dot paint. So I have a lot of wood pieces and paints and different piles of projects because I also do dot painting parties. So I have to buy things ahead of time to, you know, have for the dot painting parties. So yeah. it's just, yeah. Do you have storage containers for those products that you use? I'd have to empty out some, you know, that's where the, the, the organization comes in. I'd have to empty out some of the stuff that's in the containers. Okay. To make room for yes. more. Yes. yes. I, would, I would start there by creating space. All right. Create space. So, you know, the low hanging fruit, what can I get rid of? In a All pinch, right. it's what can I get rid of? All right. Don't overthink it. Let that go and you'll create space. And then you keep the things that are most important and, you know, go easy on yourself. If they're coming in eight days, you might just have to shove it all in a closet. There's no closets to shove it into. And that, 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 how you labeled it was like decision over made decision burnout. Yes. That decision fatigue. Yeah. yeah I've, I've experienced it. So it's like, I don't know what to do when I get to that point, take a break, you know, but I mean, I have to get back at it. Take a break. Absolutely. hundred percent. Take a break, have a cup of tea, get away from it for a while, put your feet up, like do something else, meditate. That's a really, really good one. Um, you know, just clear your mind and let all of that go and then dive back into it. And it won't be perfect. It's, it doesn't matter. Myself. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're doing it perfectly, you're doing it. Yeah. Whereas before you weren't. Yeah. So give yourself it, kudos for that. Yeah. Get organized enough. <laughs> enough. Exactly. <laughs> organized enough. That's it. Thank yeah. you for that. Thank you okay. so much. We got sure. a couple of yeah. we got a couple of other questions. A lot around photos. I'm gonna um so does anybody on if you know um of any resources to do this? I think like Costco or somebody or somebody used to 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 do organize your photos for you. If anybody has any any resources, let me know. Uh, Catherine uh, also, also asked, so if you do know resources, let me know. Um, it's, she's overwhelmed right now and feels like there's so many different areas that need attention. Where to start? Where do you recommend starting, Emily? The easiest. The easiest. 100%, the easiest. Okay. Don't try and tackle the memorabilia or the photos first. Okay. Get a couple of wins under your belt. Okay. Do a junk drawer. Just do one thing, or maybe a pantry or the refrigerator. Do one thing that's relatively easy. None of them are easy, easy, but you know, get some get some wins, and then that'll propel you forward to tackle the bigger things. And again, um, Amy's going to give my contact information. You can reach out at any time. Sometimes you just need like to get unstuck. Yeah, we do that. We do that in um, the Be Healthy Enough Digital Fitness Studio. We, uh, people are stuck and it's just five minutes for five days. No more, no less. And maybe you could do that same only this much, no more than that. Would that work for organizing, Emily? I said, would say pick a pick a drawer. Okay. Pick a drawer, pick a small space, pick a closet. Yeah. And it, it'll be more than five minutes yeah. for sure. Um, but do the best you can with that one space. And like I said, it'll give you, it'll give you the energy to do the next one, the harder one. Okay. And um, speaking of the photographs you mentioned, Amy, yeah, yeah. if you go to napo.net, N-A-P-O dot N-E-T, um, you can search specifically for organizers who handle photographs. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So and what is NAPO? NAPO is the National Association of Productivity and Professional Organizers. 
Woo-hoo. And if you're, if you're going to hire a professional organizer, I highly recommend um, you find one through NAPO. Yeah. I'm, I'm so sad, Catherine. I know, I know who you are now. Um, lost both parents and it's just that feels stuff can be stuff is everywhere. I can see how that can be very, very overwhelming. So bless you for that. Um, yeah. Uh, any more questions? Thank you. Digital, digitalize, digital, digitalize all your photos in a virtual album. That could be something too, to be good. You, you can, if that's your thing. I mean, yeah. if you're, if yeah. you're comfortable with that and that's how you like to look at pictures, um, like everyone does streaming music. I need CDs. You see <laughs> albums, but now it's CDs. I have CDs because I need to feel it. I need to open it. I need to see the liner notes and I need to play it exactly as it was intended to be heard. <laughs> so whatever, you know, you got to work with what works for you. Um, wh- one last question too, and you mentioned just in brief, is that once you get things organized, I know I can get things organized if I have my brand new desk here, but then I'm starting to pile them up. Any special system tricks or uh, just you said what you do one minute a day, make sure that you know, those piles get organized. Anything else that we can do? Well, it is a maintenance uh, yeah. issue. Um, you've got to maintain it. But if you find that you're getting piles and piles of stuff or things aren't getting uh, put away, you might have to revisit the system. Maybe there's something not quite right about the system and that the system needs tweaking. And, and they often do. It's very rare that you get it on the first try. Yeah. Sometimes you got to play with it a little bit. You'll do it within the session, but you got to play with it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, that to me, if it keeps piling up, is an indication that the system itself is a little out of whack. Got it. Like something's not right. In, um, in Julie's book, she talks about great things like technical issues and not technical like like electronic technical, technical, like you don't have enough space for the items that you have. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a technical issue. That's not delayed decisions. That's like a fundamental issue that you have to revisit. Where can you kind of like what Denise was saying, like, where can you make space? Mm -hmm. So a lot of us, a lot of Every Sunday, um, all the members get a Sunday setup email. It's, I like to sit down and go, I'm going to plan the planner, the planner. This is the workout I'm going to do. What workout, when, sometimes even where you're going to do that workout. And we could probably do that same thing with organizing, you know, lock out two to three, four hours if you can. And, oh, hey, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's February. <laughs> I know, girl, I'm behind the times. <laughs> So that could be, you know, Sundays, maybe you just find it because I know all of us are so busy. That's my problem is prioritizing that time and, and trying to think that how that's going to benefit from me working versus working on my business or exercising or doing something else. It's all trying to find that balance of what works and what the benefit will be when you get it done. It and is- it is self-care. I mean, I hate to be oh, cliche, but it it really is. That's a great way to look at organizing. It's self-care. I like yeah. it. Yeah. And I'm not going to show you my closet. <laughs> I cleaned out everything and I put everything in the closet. Now I'm like trying to carve out just a few hours to just go through my organized clutter. I call it organizer. It's, I did that first step. I just realized when you were talking, I did the separate the space thing. Sort. Mm-hmm. Sort. Yeah, I did it. So this is, this is work stuff. This is personal stuff. This is all my journals. Okay. Well, we are at three o'clock. I want to honor everybody's time. Thank you, Emily. Thank you so much for having me, Amy. Such a unique way on uh, self-care, thinking about that and, and, and healthy, clearing the clutter in our life. So we can be healthy enough to do the things that we love to do, not not feel that overwhelm. I know we will feel it, but if you can take one little tip, put it in the chat, one little thing that you're going to take away today and do this week, just one tiny drawer, one tiny thing, let us know. And I'll share all that with Emily, but thank you guys. I will get this, not today, 
I'm going to go take a walk. It's beautiful, sunny here in San Diego. It is nice out. Today, yeah. tomorrow, we're going to get rain again. <laughs> but um, I know I've got a little bit still cool. Um, but I promise I'll get this out Monday or Tuesday with the replay and links to our free gifts. And that's it. Great. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Amy. Bye, everybody. It was fun. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for supporting us. Bye. Bye.